Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. As you could tell by that opening clip, the latest firmware update still hasn't addressed one of the issues that I was having and that is detecting the ground properly. Ever since I've had this drone, one of the problems is when initiating a landing, it doesn't always go into the proper landing procedure. As you've seen in that opening clip, when I pull the stick down to start landing, the drone should go into its landing procedure where it pulls the camera up and slowly lands. Although the telemetry in the app is accurate, as soon as you pull down on the left stick it'll just slam into the ground now it doesn't always do that and they have actually improved it because before my drone would not stay hovering in one place especially indoors if I tried to hover it would just continue to rise up so they have fixed those issues but every now and again it will still just slam into the ground and that's actually how I damaged the camera on this particular drone I went to land on some asphalt and it just slammed down I'll put a picture up here just a close-up so you can see now the damage is minimal but it does affect it I can tell sometimes when flying into the sun that chip there does refract some light and sometimes you can get some uh, weird uh, things going on in the video this video basically is about the latest firmware update to see if it corrected some of the major issues that a lot of people were experiencing the first being jello now when it comes to jello with the nano not everybody has experienced it at first I thought it was a climate thing because I was flying it in cold weather below what it's actually rated for but I've been able to fly this on some mild days where it's well above the minimum temperature and there's people who do live in warmer climates that have been experiencing jello as well now the interesting thing about the jello is just for those who are aren't aware Autel had made a post that some of the dampeners were installed incorrectly. The back ones were installed at the front and the front were installed at the back or they were installed backwards or something to do with that. When people were creating tickets they were asking them to send the drone back in so they could be corrected. But then they changed their tune and said it doesn't matter. In fact that's what I've been told by both Autel pilots and my contact at Autel. They said in their internal testing it doesn't matter which way the dampeners are installed. There should be no difference. What they were saying is basically the gel was still a firmware issue and it was going to be corrected with a firmware update so they did go ahead and indeed release a firmware update that was supposed to 100% correct the jello so that's what we're going to be testing today in this video on top of that we're also going to be testing the speed of this drone that's another issue that popped up early after the release it was first advertised being able to fly at 15 meters per second in sport mode but it quickly became apparent that the maximum speed of this drone when in sport mode was only 12 meters per second but with the latest firmware update what they've done here is similar to what they've done with the Autel Evo 2 is that when you're in sport mode or ludicrous mode is what they're calling it now you can set it to video priority or speed speed priority. In video priority the drone won't fly as fast but you're gonna have better quality video, less jitter and shake, but if you need that extra speed and power you can put it at speed priority and then the drone will be able to get up to that 15 meters per second. So again we will be testing that out here in a moment. The other thing we're gonna be checking is horizon tilt. That's another thing that was supposedly corrected with this firmware update and also just the speed at which it can fly in the wind. This thing has been notorious for not doing well in the wind. Several YouTubers, including myself, almost lost their drone when flying in moderately windy days, still under a level five wind, just because the drone was not capable of fighting it. So let's go ahead here. I had it out yesterday and uh, let's take a look at some of that footage. So we're just gonna go out and do some tests right now. And uh, a couple things, there's actually four things that I wanna test today. Uh, first being the horizon. And uh, right now it actually looks pretty level. That was one of the things supposedly fixed in this firmware update. And uh, of course we're going to test the speed. It's now capable of 15 meters per second. We're going to check wind resistance when hovering. And then of course we are going to check for jello. That is something that, that has plagued me since I've had this drone. So the first thing I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to point the camera down and we're going to see how it's drifting up in the air. Uh, right now we're 78 meters up. Let's go up a little bit higher here. A little bit windier the higher we get. Uh, it's not overly windy today. I'll put the metrics up on the screen here for you. Uh, but there's a good breeze today. And uh, as you can see there, it seems to be holding position pretty well. And uh, we'll put the camera back up here. And uh, yeah, so what we're going to do here, I'm in standard mode. And uh, we're just going to go and fly around and... Uh, Keep an eye out for some jello. So let's go do that first. Let's just do a bit of a flight.
Okay, so we've just done some flying around there. I've stopped recording. And of course, I can't tell if there's any jello in the footage yet. I'll have to wait till I get home and examine it. But I will include some commentary at the end of this video after I've had a chance to examine it. So the horizon has stayed pretty good so far. Uh, you can see there that there is maybe a slight tilt, but barely noticeable. Um, so far, that looks pretty good. Horizon tilt seems to be uh, quite popular on drones nowadays. Even my Mavic 3 sometimes has been struggling. But let's go ahead here and we'll do some speed tests. Uh, what we're going to be doing is seeing if we can get up to the advertised speeds and just checking wind resistance because, of course, you know, if you're flying against the wind, then you're going to be flying slower than if you have a tailwind. So right now we're in standard mode. Let's uh, head in this direction right now. And uh, you can see we're flying at the uh, 10 meters a second at which it's advertised. No issue at all. So now let's go ahead and we'll spin around. We'll go the other way. This way we will be fighting the wind a little bit. And uh, sometimes this is where the jello can be introduced as well. And you can see there yet yeah, we are going at 6.4 meters per second. And really that's, you know, to be expected, even my Mini 2, you know, it actually does really well in the wind, but when you're flying against the wind on a windy day, you can only get about maybe, you know, a little over half the speed. So we were going to put it in ludicrous mode here, and uh, let's just check our priority preference, and right now we have it set to video mode. So I do believe it's 13 meters per second in video mode, where it's going to give you the best quality video, but not as much speed. So let's go ahead here, and uh, we'll fly in this direction first. And uh, we're flying at 13.4 um, meters per second, so that's pretty good. But we do have a bit of a tailwind. But honestly, I can already see an improvement than the last time I was out here. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll fly this way now. It's a little more aggressive when it's in ludicrous mode. So now we are flying at 6.8, 6.6. So not much faster than when we were in uh, standard mode. But it's not uh, flying backwards at least. Like the last time I was out here, I couldn't even, uh, couldn't even move. And uh, the wind was approximately the same, maybe a little bit less today. Let's go ahead and we'll change the priority to speed. So we'll go to flight mode. We'll switch it to speed. And uh, let's go ahead here. We'll start with the tailwind behind us. And um, yeah, we should be able to hit that 15 meters per second. No issue at all. Yeah, let's uh, spin it around here. Yeah, not too bad. We're almost at 10 meters per second, and that's going against the wind. So it's not perfect. It's not right at that 50 meters per second, but as mentioned, that is to be expected when there is a wind. But actually, I am pretty pleased with that. Uh, much better performance than uh, it was last time I was out here testing it. So just some final thoughts here. First of all, let's talk about the Jello. Indeed, I would have to say that they have corrected pretty well most of the Jello issues. Before this firmware update, the footage that I would capture on this drone in some situations was just unusable. It was super obvious when watching playback of the video. But after analyzing the video I captured with it this morning, I can't really notice that there was maybe one little spot where I thought maybe I seen some. Now, maybe some of you have a better eye than me. I'd like to hear your opinion. In that footage that I shown, did you see any jello? Let me know down in the comments. Now, just to recap there, as you can see, I still have the original style of dampeners. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. So this drone does not have the updated configuration, but that firmware update did seem to fix the jello for me anyways. Now, what is interesting here about the jello issue is that I made a community post, uh, you can see there, five days ago, asking owners who had Jello issues that if this firmware update corrected the problem. And as you can see here, it's exactly the same. 13% say Jello problem has been fixed, and 13% of the voters say I still have Jello. So it's kind of split right down the middle. And of course, 74% voted that Jello is delicious. 
good to know. So that is kind of interesting. Now, as for horizon tilt, it does appear that they've corrected that in the flight that I did this morning. I didn't have any horizon tilt, uh, maybe just a little bit at the beginning, but that soon disappeared. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. Now, of course, I'm going to have to fly it a lot more to really get a good feel for this firmware update. Uh, but generally, I think they've made some good improvements. Now, as for wind resistance, how it can fight the wind, it's still not as good as something like the Mini 2, but I think they did make some improvements there as well. And as you can see, we were able to get up to that 15 meters per second. Now, that's when we were flying with a tailwind. But before this update, it definitely was not able to do that. So this firmware update for the Nano was definitely a step in the right direction. This drone still needs a lot of work, there's still a lot of missing features, and there's still some issues that need to be corrected. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, that bouncing, uh, I know not everybody suffers from that, but I have read on some Facebook groups that uh, there are some people that do have that issue as well. Well folks, that's basically it for this video. If you are a person who does have your eye on the Nano, you're thinking of purchasing it, make sure you're subscribed to my channel as I will be covering it fully as we go on, as new firmware updates get released. We'll be making updates and testing everything out. I want to thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and found it had value. It's always greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.